Good morning. How are you today? Please let me know if you can hear me. Great, thank you very much. Welcome to the live stream. This is my first time. I'm just testing things out to see how it goes. I'm fine. Fantastic. Very nice to see you. I haven't been on your channel for uh, probably a week or two, but uh, what are you up to at the moment? Are you doing some more pause? Drawing mushrooms this morning. Just bear with me a little bit here. I've been a little bit distracted. Working on tumblers lately. What do you mean by tumblers? As in glass tumblers? Hey Shark, how are you? Inspiration, how are you guys going? Good morning everybody. So stainless steel tumblers, great. And resin, I've never worked with resin. Are you making a video about it? I'll have to come check it out. So, Shark, how did your, um, your exhibition that you've recently finished end up? I saw you posting some interesting stuff on social media, some news interviews, some uh, uh, different uh, people sharing your work on, uh, on Instagram and so on. Just a quick check in guys, can everybody see and hear okay? Perfect. Thank you very much, Inspirations. 
And what are you working on at the moment, mate? I know you do a lot of uh, a lot of interesting videos that combine a bit of history, some knowledge, and some philosophy. Again, I haven't seen too many of your videos yet. I'm still uh, still getting around to that. So, what are you working on at the moment? Yeah, Shark, it's always a problem, I guess, to uh, to have had a successful show. Now, it's often difficult to find the same thing with making YouTube videos and everything else, that you get so busy doing other things, you don't get as much time to spend on the art as you would otherwise. But anyway, I'm sure you'll get back to the studio, mate. Hopefully you get to spend some time in that jungle of yours as well. So this morning I'm drawing mushrooms and you might wonder why. Well, actually there's no specific reason. I just felt like drawing some mushrooms. I found this cool picture on uh, Pixabay last night when I was looking for some other things. So I thought I'd give this a try. I bought a few new pens the other day and I've been mucking around a little bit with some ink drawing and uh, I just wanted to check this out and give it a run. This is really just a test stream. I didn't know if it was going to work this morning or not. I'm very glad you guys could join me. I know you're all from comment sections and other things, but uh, it's great to be able to sit and have a chat with you guys. Why don't you tell me where you guys are from? Good morning, M. How are you today? Tell me where you're from and what time it is. It must be very early if uh, M drawing has come on. We seem to be in a fairly distant time zone. From the UK, inspiration from the past. So it must be Friday night for you then, sir. Seeing that it's Saturday morning for me already. So welcome to the welcome to the weekend, guys. For the, those of you that are still stuck on Friday. It's looking pretty good here. It's just after 5 a.m. in Australia. The sun will come up in another hour and a half and we'll see what sort of a day we have. We've had a lot of water, a lot of uh, heavy rain in the last few weeks. In particular, over the last, uh, the beginning of, of this week just gone, we had some heavy rainfall and flooding near the area that I live in, but Luckily, I wasn't too affected by the flooding, but uh, yeah, we had uh, 170 millimetres of rain in one day. Evening for you. There you go. Yeah, it's tricky to keep track of all these time zones. So do you guys like my blue pen? I've been experimenting and drawing with different colors that aren't just black. The 
Yeah, it was a lot of rain inspiration. We certainly were soggy and wet. I'm fortunate that I live at the top of a mountain, so the rain runs away very quickly for me. But the poor folks at the bottom of the mountains, they've been experiencing some heavy flooding all week. A lot of people had water in their houses, so definitely my my thoughts go out to those guys. It's quite difficult. I've been through floods before, and uh, it's not fun at all. Anyhow, we can't change those things. Well, thank you, Anne. So what are you drawing at the moment? You're bound to have some exciting project underway. I'm just discovering that it's actually quite difficult to try to carry a conversation and do a drawing at the same time. There's a fair bit of concentration required for both, apparently. Anyhow, we'll do our best here. I'm just going to make a fairly loose drawing today. We're going to use a lot of cross hatching. I'm not going to agonize over any fiddly little details. I'm really just having some fun this morning and testing out the stream. Thank you very much, Shark. Definitely, we've had some people are saying this is a one in a hundred year flood. Um, we've certainly had a lot more rain than we've had previously in this area for a very long time. So, we've had a, a little bit of wild weather over the last few years. We've done some, we had bushfires, quite a lot of bad bushfires in 2019 on the back of a very long drought. And now we've had um, flooding this year. So on top of it all, it's been quite a uh, quite a challenging few years, particularly for folks living in the country like I do. We're surrounded by nature all the time and we have to try to work in with it very closely. You know, it definitely has a big impact on all of us with our work and with our play and just with our homes and where we choose to live. But the sun's come out again now. Things are drying out. Hopefully the water levels will drop down for those guys who are badly affected. So how is the weather in your parts of the world? A lot of you guys will be experiencing spring now. The weather will be warming up. You happy about that? Oh, thank you very much, inspiration from the past. You say very nice things to me. Actually, when I set this this little space up to do some drawing under the camera, my original idea, and it's still kicking around in the back of my head, was for being able to do some live drawing lessons at some point. And that's where we want to get to with this. Um, I'm very interested in being able to teach art and being able to share my skills with other people and being able to do some of those things. So. As you may have noticed, some of the uh, some of the videos on my channel are more oriented towards tutorials, and just using different mediums, I'm aiming at finding some interesting and simple ways that people will be able to you know, get a, a good start in drawing, a good grounding in some of the elements and principles of design, and be able to learn how to create the work that they want to create. So those are some of the things that I'm working towards in my spare time, which is limited. It's warming up for you, Art Flow by Mo. Shall I call you Mo?
Mushrooms are interesting things. We've got a lot of mushrooms at the moment. I have a lot of open paddocks around my house where I live and we get a lot of mushrooms grow up whenever we have a big rain event. So we'll see how the weather is today or tomorrow. I might even go for a walk and pick some of the mushrooms. We can eat most of the mushrooms that grow around here. Usually, I've only ever made myself sick by eating the wrong mushrooms once. Have you guys ever picked mushrooms and gone out to eat the mushrooms that you picked in the field? So you pick your own mushrooms, Mo, that's great to hear. There's something really nice about being able to go out and gather your own food from nature. It's great to have a garden and those sorts of things as well, but to actually be able to go out in the wild and be able to pick something off the trees and off the bushes and off the ground, it's a great feeling. I have some berry bushes that grow wild not far from where I live. And earlier in the summer, we can go and harvest those. There's a few other bits and pieces. We have some wild fruit trees and different things that grow in the area. And again, we can go and pick some of the good things that grow on those things. What about you guys? you ever go out and try to find things to eat? I know you like to spend time in the jungle, Shark. Is there anything there that you can get to eat, mate? Trying to build up a, a connection with the land again. I guess a connection with our roots or with our, our origins of where we came from. I like being outside. I like the feeling of being outside in the different weather, you know, beautiful warm day, even a cold and miserable day. It's still a good feeling to be able to experience different weather. In my day job, I work in an office. I'm stuck inside all the time in the air conditioning or different things where I don't always know what the weather is outside. I can't see outside. I can't hear if it's raining. I can't see if it's sunny. I can't experience those things. So it's a great feeling to be able to go outside and spend time. Yeah, from your... From your artwork, I've had the feeling that you were quite interested in the jungle shark. I see that you're quite active um, as an advocate for a few different causes, in particular about what I've been noticing is about your, your homeland being taken away for agricultural purposes and things like that. It sounds like all of you guys are wild foragers. Berries, yeah, wild berries are great. It's one of my favourite memories from my childhood, I guess, is we all used to go out as a family. I came from a large family. There was lots of us. And we all used to go out and pick the wild blackberries and then we'd make pies. Half the time, not many of the berries even made it home to make pies with. We'd be too busy eating them as fast as we could pick them off the bush anyway. The great days of getting pricked by bushes and thorns and falling down in strange holes and whatever else might have happened, but we used to do a lot of things as a family.
I need a darker pen now. Let's try some of this one. So, the government tried to turn your land into a development project, Shark. Which is definitely a shame. I think in many, many countries of the world, there's been a long history of taking land from people, land that they needed to survive on, or at least to be able to live their traditional lifestyles. And many governments have, uh, have taken that land away and given it to people who wanted to make money out of it. And it's a shame to lose your history. It's a shame to lose your heritage. It's a shame to be able to lose the choice to live your life how you want to. That's my opinion. So good on you for standing up for yourself, Shark, and good on you for standing up for other folks that may not be able to stand up for themselves. Absolutely, mate. They definitely are greedy. Greed seems to drive more things in the world than any other any other motivation. So inspirations from the past, you like to go to historical sites from the look of what your comment says to me. It sounds pretty cool. I like to go to historical places as well. I live in a, in a country that doesn't have probably as many historical sites as you do. You guys have, um, will have a lot more old houses and old buildings and all of those sorts of things. Now in Australia, an old house is one that's over a hundred years old, but I know that you guys in the UK have some some very old buildings, you know, maybe five hundred years old and things like that. So it's pretty cool. Some of the historical sites that we have in Australia are very old, but those are, are sites that aren't easy to access and uh, often, um, you know won't be a whole lot to see there'll be some cave paintings or just even just some historical area where some stories will relate to the events that went on there but there'll be nothing physically there to see particularly so it's quite interesting to be able to look back at where we've come from and how we began and how we got to where we are now I used to read a lot of history books. I used to watch history documentaries and other things like that whenever I got the chance. So I definitely can understand that you enjoy to go out and participate in some of those things as well. It's a great opportunity for us to learn from our past, I think. A great opportunity for us to take some of the mistakes that we made in the past and to make a different decision now. We seem to be getting quite heavy this morning. Not morning for me anyway.
Traveling to the UK shark. That's pretty cool. I've never been to the UK. It's a place I'd like to go. Of course, some of my ancestors came from the UK. My last name is Irish. And particularly on my father's side, I have a, a lot of Irish ancestors. I would love to go there and check out the place where my family came from a little while ago. But as you said, it's quite difficult for any of us to travel at the moment because of the pandemic. I know that now that the world has started getting some vaccines, some folks are starting to talk about international travel opening up again in some areas, but I have the feeling it'll still be quite a while before we return to our previous ways of just traveling anywhere we want, anytime we like. Five times already, Shark. Wow. So where's the number one place that's on your list to travel to that you haven't been to yet, guys? UK is definitely on my list, but also I definitely want to try to get to Canada one day. It's also far away from me, but uh, I'd love to go and see some of the Canadian wilderness. There's so many great parts of the world, so much interesting and fascinating nature that I've never been able to go and see. Every country has some unique places to visit, I'm sure. But um, yeah, Canada is one that just holds a bit of uh, a bit of mystery for me. Travel five times a year, Chuck. <clears throat> That's a lot. Germany and Canada for you guys. Absolutely. Look, Germany's quite an interesting country as well. You're absolutely right there. Germany and Austria and the Alps. Too big to explore, Shark? I can imagine so. I mean, Canada and the US, they're massive countries. There's no doubt about that. Australia is a big country, but most of the places that people visit are actually just scattered around the East Coast. But Canada is definitely a big old country. So Mo, do you have uh, any German heritage or um, family from Germany back in your past at some point? I'm interested to know now, is it just an interest for you, or is it uh, there's some personal connection there?
You've been to Germany, inspirations? I guess from the UK, traveling to other parts of Europe wouldn't be very difficult. It's uh, in Australia, you can travel four or 5,000 kilometers and still be in Australia. But in Europe, I guess that's a very different place, and even in Asia. <clears throat> Yes, Germany, the country where they have the beer and the sausages. I don't drink very much beer, but if I was to go to such a country, I would probably take a, what do they call those things, steins? Take a stein of beer just to check it out and see what it's like. I guess that's the thing about history, isn't it? You can't just take the good, you have to take the bad as well. We need to remember where we've come from and what we've done. And while we personally might not have done those things, being able to see the choices other people made and do a better job, I think is an important thing. Sometimes we need to take a bit of sadness, I think, to help us learn. So I definitely agree with you, Flo, on that one, that Sometimes history can be charming, sometimes it can be romantic, sometimes it can be painful and difficult and we have to be willing to look at ourselves as we really are and not to dress it up and make it something it's not. But still not to wallow in those things. Yes, learning is a fantastic thing, isn't it, Shark? It's, it's something that never ends. It's always ongoing. The day you stop learning, you might as well give up. I think it's, uh, it's the best thing we can do to try and understand each other and even understand ourselves. One hundred languages, shark. That's a lot. I can't remember the number, but um, I do know that supposedly when, uh, when the Europeans came to Australia, there was something like eight hundred different dialects and different cultural groups.
Absolutely inspirations. I agree with that statement. It's amazing how we've taken such a diversity in the world and we're gradually condensing it through the internet and through international travel. So many isolated countries and communities are now able to come together, which is a great thing. But at the same time, we have to try to make sure that we can hold on to our uniqueness and our individuality. Great that we can all talk to each other in a common language, but it's also important that people are able to hold on to their heritage. It's important that people are able to hold on to their cultural identity and still be the person that they are without being forced into a an image or a, a particular prototype. That's my opinion. We should be allowed to be who we are. How many languages do you speak, Shark? Do you speak a few of those? Do you understand a few words or are you fluent in some of those languages? Thank you, Mo. It's always creating a scribble drawing like this always takes time to build up the layers. You simply can't get everything done quickly. Whereas working with charcoal, like I often do, you can get a lot of depth really quickly and have a good idea of the of the type of drawing that it's going to turn into within a few minutes. But that's why I like to do things differently sometimes. It's great to challenge myself not to get stuck in a rut or to always do the same old thing. Good morning, Kath. How are you today? Glad to see you come along. I'm testing out a live stream. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good morning, ThinkArt. How are you today? Glad to see you. Welcome to the stream. For those of you just joining us, we've been having some discussions about history and culture and all sorts of deep topics. It's early for me here and I haven't even finished my first cup of coffee yet. You guys are really getting my brain working early this morning. So, Kath and Thinkart, what are you guys working on at the moment? What exciting projects have you got going on? on eggshells wow is that some easter project
Enjoy your food. Inspiration. Yes, Easter's coming up soon, guys. Does everybody here celebrate Easter in some shape or form? What does Easter look like in your country? If you don't celebrate Easter, is there another festival that takes its place? Church family in an egg hunt, flow by Mo. Yes, I think that that's quite a common thing. Definitely, I grew up with a very similar tradition to that. In Australia, Easter always falls in autumn. So it's often accompanied by cooler weather. It's often rainy at Easter for us. It's also the time of year where we have the Sydney Agricultural Show, which is one of the biggest agricultural shows. Well, it is the biggest, I think, in Australia. So uh, it's a time for showing off all of your autumn harvest and everything else and uh, being... Being with family, I guess Easter doesn't have as much meaning for me nowadays. It used to be more meaningful when I was younger. As we get older and we get bogged down with work and other things, we tend to lose some of that, some of that excitement about some of these holidays, I guess, or I certainly did. But... definitely a great time of year to get together with family any excuse to get together with family is a good thing and as long as we keep it about that then all of these holidays are still very important and very meaningful These are some new pens that I bought the other day. I haven't been using pens for drawing much for a long time. When I draw with ink, a lot of the time I use a brush. A lot of the time I'll, I'll mix up an ink wash and use a brush. And it's kind of like using watercolor in a lot of ways. What about you guys? Do you ever use ink? See you, Shark. Thank you very much for stopping by, mate. I hope you have a great sleep, mate. See you another time. Do you guys work with ink? You like it? You hate it? Couldn't care less about it? Sometimes I use ink and other mediums together. Like a favorite combination for me is sometimes making an ink drawing and then putting some pastel on top, or sometimes coming in over the top of a pastel drawing with a little bit of ink to just add some 
some variation in the texture and add a little bit more definition around some of the, the areas. See you, M. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you have a wonderful day or night or evening or something. Take care. A little bit dark some of these areas and the danger of working with ink pens is it's hard to come back once you've gone too dark but I can get a little bit darker by putting in a little bit of black here and there so we'll do that It was an experimental drawing for an experimental live stream this morning. So it's okay. We're allowed to make mistakes. We're allowed to be human. One of the great things about art, whatever you do, right, wrong, or otherwise, you can have another go and you can always try again. And I think that's very important. And I don't mind showing my mistakes to people, particularly showing them to beginners because I think it's very important in this day and age for people to be able to see that everybody makes mistakes and everybody has to go through a learning process to get better at their art. If we scroll through Instagram or have a look online, we see a lot of people showing off their very best work. And we think that that's just what they do and that's just how they, how they are. And that we're not so good because we make mistakes but the reality is we're all in that same boat we've all been through the same treadmill to get there and we're still going to make mistakes and if we share those mistakes and maybe a beginner somewhere will see that maybe it's possible for them to do it too and i think it's important for us to keep it human and not to just show off our best work of course, doing things live, there's going to be plenty of scope for things to go wrong and plenty of scope for happy accidents as well, where we can learn something or discover something new. I've been doing art in some way, shape or form for a long time, but I'm still learning. I'm still a beginner in a lot of ways because you never stop learning. One of the most valuable things that I think we can give to other people is respect and if we give them our respect then that also includes being prepared to be a little bit vulnerable and show our mistakes We'll see if we can pull something out of this yet. I don't think it's terrible. It's 
So think art, I haven't heard much from you. What are you up to at the moment? You're doing some drawing, some painting? Drawing with ink on paper, we have to remember to leave the white as the absolute highlights. It's one of the tricky things. I know that nowadays there are white pens that you can buy and use, which definitely makes it easier. The rice field, that sounds pretty cool. I'm also working on some landscapes at the moment. If you guys are on Instagram, I usually keep a, uh, a running tally of what I do on Instagram. So I'll show progress shots and sometimes talk a little bit about decisions I make in my artwork and things like that. I just don't have enough time to make as many videos as I would like to make. So Instagram's another way if you're interested to see what I'm up to, you can check it out there. Nothing like a bit of self-promotion on my part. Oh, I'll keep an eye out for you, Bo. If I see you, um, I'll follow you back and I'll check out your work there. Actually, one of the things I love about YouTube and Instagram is just the opportunity that it gives us to see other people's artwork. It's fantastic, in my opinion, to be able to see what other folks are up to and to be able to learn from each other. Years ago, artists all had to be isolated. They didn't get an opportunity to work together unless they were all in a single art school or in a single place. But nowadays, artists can come together virtually and see each other's work. How do we stay motivated in arts? Well. I guess there are challenges around being an artist or being involved in art, but one of the things that motivates me is simply that I really enjoy doing it. And so as a result, it's not as difficult for me to stay motivated to create. Certainly, it can be challenging at times to keep going if you feel like you're not doing well. It can be difficult if you're trying to have some commercial success because that's quite challenging and difficult to achieve. But the thing that really keeps me interested is the learning aspect of art because there's always something new to learn. There's always something that I don't know. There's some artwork that I haven't seen and there's a technique I haven't tried. There's a style I haven't tried or there's, there's always more that we can learn and we can get better at and we can refine. And that's what really keeps me motivated and interested. It's nice if people compliment your work. It's nice if you feel good about your work as well, but 
even if you don't, if you're learning something and if you're gaining something, then that's a positive for me, at least anyway. So largely that's how I like to stay motivated. I think in life in general, that's the case. I think about art as a journey, not as a destination. So doing a piece of artwork, I'm interested in my artwork. I'm interested in how it's going to turn out, but it's also not, not the end of the world if it doesn't turn out, because I know I can always do it again. I can always try again. I can learn more. I can do better. One of the ways that we can lose motivation is if we have a lot of negative self-talk. If we look at our artwork and we think it's not very good or we're not doing very well. But one of the ways I like to look at it is even if it didn't turn out as well as I would have liked it, I just learned something. And even if I made a mistake, I've still gained something from that mistake. Because now I know not to do it again. Now I can try something different. And so I think that that's, that's one of the keys for me is just keeping that mindset that it's a journey and it's going to take time and it's going to take many years. I've been doing this now for uh, 25, 26 years. And I still learn all the time. I'm still gaining new ideas uh, all the time and I think it's fantastic so I hope that answers the question but being able to meet new people online and people with a common interest is also another useful skill or a useful tool that we can use to to help us stay motivated I think If we're just working in isolation by ourselves and never interacting with someone else, that can be challenging as well. So depending on the type of person you are, some people like a lot of interaction with other people. Some people like to spend a lot of time on their own. And some people will get a lot more out of joining a group or being part of a group. Um, and depending on where you live, there may be some sort of artistic group or community that you can get involved with. And just being a part of something bigger than yourself can sometimes be motivating as well. Guys, I'm coming close to the end of the journey on this particular drawing. There's not a whole lot more I want to do with it. It was an experiment and we've learned something. The finished result isn't brilliant, but what's interesting to me is I've done something different. I've done something that I don't normally do. And that's given me a different result. Well, thank you, Mo. I really appreciate your comment there. One of the things I love to get out of these kind of drawings is a sense of some energy from the lines. We can draw more carefully and precisely and have a more realistic drawing that doesn't have the energy of the lines in it. Or we can let ourselves go a little bit and 
get something out of the, the lines themselves. You know, the drawing's about mushrooms, but it's also about the abstract shapes around the mushrooms. The spaces like here in between these mushrooms and here and the darks and the lights and I like to work realistically sometimes, but I also like to work in a semi-abstract way sometimes and to give myself a bit more freedom. And that's what we've done today. So guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. But I really appreciate you coming today. I'm really grateful that you came and checked out my live stream. I, of course, will come and check you guys out. I'm always interested to see what you're up to and to see what's going on in the world. So uh, thank you very much for watching. And uh, I hope you guys have a, a very, very wonderful day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.